I found a couple more uh, toroids here. These are two stacked together. You know, still not very big, but bigger than what I had. So these are yellow and white colored mix of uh, powdered iron. And then what I had on there was one of these guys. But to be honest, I, w I actually unwound one. I was getting ready to stack them. But then um, I realized I didn't even have the wire, so I had to buy some wire. But I'm just going to uh, save this guy for another smaller build. And just wait till I get the other uh, core in. But in the meantime, these guys provide a little more surface area. And they work about the same. A little bit more inductance on this one than on this one. So I really just used the same wire length that I pulled off one of these guys. So... Now these were some I ordered a while back, uh, but this is actually material 43, so this turns out to not really be a, a good type of core for this application. Uh, this is usually for high frequency EMI suppression and stuff like that, uh, but it's got a pretty high permeability to be honest. I mean, it's nowhere near as high as that big blue one that I had on there, but you know, if I was to put as many wines on here as I've got on this guy, the, the uh, inductance would be way way higher like order of magnitude greater if i was just to scope the output of the buck to observe that ramp it's not going to be long before i get to a voltage before that output just starts looking real bad and again i could actually probably push this circuit all the way up with that full bridge using just one of these uh, but i'll have to keep the on time fairly down i can still probably get decent arcs right got this guy in the uh, magic tupperware uh, so this is basically the buck, and it's still sort of temporary connected. Uh, so I'm still kind of working out, you know, am I going to try a fiber or what? I don't know what I'm going to do because, you know, it's still not isolated. Toroid, double stack cord down there now instead of this guy, which I had before. Kind of just going to put it right there for a second, for a little bit, play with the on time a little bit. I guess it's really hard to see because uh, that's the only light that comes up. I guess if that's the only light in the room, then uh, I guess it kind of has to adjust for a second. So let me get something going. All right. So I'm about halfway up on the Variag now. I feel like that cap's not being drained a whole lot every one of these pulses. Otherwise, I would uh, definitely hear that Variag humming a lot more as I cut this up. So the limitation on, on what's going on with the output when I crank the uh, ramp time really high like that, uh, you know, probably has to do with other factors, but kind of seems like as far as getting the maximum length, I'm only gonna get so much cranking that on time further like that. That might change with the uh, larger inductor, I'm not sure. But uh, it also might greatly improve if I, if I uh, just double that cap value, basically, or increase that uh, capacitance. So, I don't know. This is like all the way down, so I'm just going to crank it just the slightest bit above all the way down. And let's see, I'm going to bring it to about 100. So that's not bad. That's pretty damn close to uh, what I was getting, 120 VAC from the wall. Not bad ramps. Let's see, probably move it up a little bit. Almost.
kind of does the little wants to sort of do the little starburst thing sometimes but only comes out with like one little side arc at the very end like that as you can see so I just i guess that just has to do with some funkiness going on right at the end of the ramp but i don't really see that when i have the on time down lower every now and then so maybe that you know kind of has to do with uh you know pushing that peak power i'm sort of getting close to the limit of what that uh buck can handle just with that particular arrangement yeah so when i up it like that it starts to do some funky things and i'm you know i'm not really pulling a whole lot of power doing this so realistically the idea would be to you know get sort of a build like that going where you you know you basically just got uh that big cat bank being charged up off some inverter circuit you know that's that's what your output is that's pretty cool Ten right there. Still don't really want to push it too much till I get the new filter core. But that's pretty good right there. Definitely over a foot. So not bad. I mean, you know, you, basically the point is, if you know, if you're not actually trying to build a, a crazy high power, like double full bridge dual resonance setup, you know, you just want a, a Tesla coil that can do uh, like cool ramps from DC, and uh, boom, something like that will be fine. Seems like. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> See, in this case, this is the uh, power source for this whole shebang. But uh, I suppose if it could take it, then you, know, you could also use a doubler.